Hi, everybody. I am Ms. Karen at Adams Memorial Library. Welcome to this week's book report. So the books I have for you this week are all about libraries. So you can come to the library. You can come to Adams Memorial Library and check out books about libraries and read those at home. Could be fun. So the books I have this week are Library Line, which was written by Michelle Knudsen and the illustrations are by Kevin Hawks. A Library Book for Bear, written by Bonnie Becker, with illustrations by Katie McDonald Denny. The Midnight Library, written and illustrated by Kazuno Kahara. The Not So Quiet Library, written and illustrated by Zachariah O'Hora. And a brand new book to the library called The Lost Library which was written and illustrated by Jess McEachin. Let me tell you a little bit more about these libraries. This first one, Library Line, is sort of takes place in an old fashioned library. And if this picture looks familiar, it's because we have a poster with this on it right outside the children's room. So the next time you're in the library, you can come down and visit it and then you can look for Library Line to check out. So in this library, just like at our library, there are some stone lions outside. So if you come to Adams, maybe you say hello to the stone lions. But here's a, live, a real lion who was just passing by, sees stone lions and decides to go in. So maybe it's gonna happen at Adams sometime. Now I'll be prepared. I've read this book, I know what to do. In the story, the lion just walks right in, walks past the circulation desk, heads onto the floor. And this is Mr. McBee, and he doesn't think that Lion should be in the library. So he runs down the hall, seeing Miss Merriweather, the library director, the head librarian, and he says, there's a lion in the library. And she says, is he breaking any rules? Mr. McBee says, well, no. She says, then leave him be. So they do. And the lion walks around the library and then takes a nap in the picture books, but then he wakes up when he hears a librarian reading stories at story time. And oh, the librarian really likes these stories, except he likes them so much that when she's finished, he gets a little bit upset. And so he roars very loudly. And then Miss Merriweather does come out and say, mm, no roaring. No, you have to be quiet voices in the library here. But one little girl says, well, if he promises to be quiet, could he stay? Could he come back? And Miss Merriweather says, yes, a quiet library, a quiet lion would always be welcome in the library. So he does come back. He wants to come back for story time the next day, but he arrives a little early. So he starts to find jobs for himself. He dusts dusts the shelves with his towel with his with his tail. He licks the envelopes that Miss Merriweather is trying to send out. That's very useful. Oh, and he lifts the kids up so they can reach the books on the top shelves. And that is very, very useful and very helpful too. So everybody loves the lion. Well maybe not Mr. McBee. He's not quite as fond of the lion. But everything's going along really well until some one day something happens and the lion needs to get Mr. McBee's attention, but Mr. McBee is not paying any attention to him. And so finally the lion doesn't know what else to do. He roars very loudly, but then he knows that lions who roar can't stay at the library. So he goes. Well, if you check this book out, you'll see what, what do the children do? What does Miss Merriweather do? What does the lion do? What does Mr. McBee do? So you can come to the library and check out Library Lion and find out. Now, when we did birthday books, we did a birthday for Bear. And so you might recall that Bear is a little bit, well, maybe, maybe more than a little bit grumpy. He's also a little bit grumpy about libraries. He's never been to one, so he doesn't understand that they could be a really great place to visit. But his friend Mouse does. So Mouse 
is trying to convince Bear to go to the library, but Bear thinks he does not need to go to the library because he already has books at home. He has seven books, three about kings and queens, three about honeybees, one about pickles. He thinks that's all anybody needs. And friends, I'm here to tell you that's not. <laughs> you need lots more books than that. And if you get tired of those books, you should come to the library and get more. And Mouse is trying to convince Bear of that too. When he comes and says, we're off to the library, yay! And Bear tries to say, no, 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 I, I have these seven books, remember? But, Bear, but Mouse tells him, oh, there's lots more fun books, and Bear did say he'd go. So he puts on his roller skates. Mouse hops in the basket. They head off to the library with the wind rippling pleasantly through their fur. Oh, and it's a giant library, which is the best kind of library because that means there are more books there. <gasps> but Bear's not so sure. He's, he's, he's a little intimidated. He thinks it's maybe a little bit too big. And mm, he's just not at all sure he likes it there. But Mouse says, don't worry. You sit down. I'll find you the perfect book. The other thing is Bear's, you know, he's very big. So it's a very big voice. And when he gets a little excited, he gets a little bit loud. And his voice is getting louder and louder until <gasps> somebody shushes him. Oh, now we've tried never, ever, ever to shush anybody here at Adams, but somebody did it. And it was not a librarian. It, it was, um, it was a uh, mother squirrel. Story time's going on. Some of the some of the animals can't hear, so she shushed them. And then Bear didn't really like to be shushed, so he got a little bit grumpy about that. So oh, Mouse thinks, well, he'll just try to find a book and then they'll have to leave. Bear wants to go home. But when Mouse comes back, Bear is listening to something, something really interesting. He's listening to the book that the librarian's doing at story time. And you will never guess what that book is about. Well, maybe you'll guess. And then if you come and check out a library book for Bear, you can see if you were right. See if there actually is a book at the library that Bear would really like. Now this one, the Midnight Library, is a library much like this one, except it is only open at night because there are a lot of nocturnal animals and they need a library too. They need to get books, but they're only awake at night. So the Midnight Library is a little librarian and some owls who are awake at night. And so they work there. And it opens at midnight and closes at dawn. And I think I could work there. I think I could do the Midnight Library. I could not do the one that opens at dawn, though. If we have to do that, Miss Mary's going to have to do the dawn shift because that's too early for me. But midnight, I could, I could probably help out at the Midnight Library. So... Like this library, a lot of people, or I'm sorry, a lot of animals here come to get books. And they all like to read, and they're just reading, and it's very quiet until sometimes libraries get a little loud, especially when a squirrel band starts playing and playing the trumpet, playing the drums really, really, really loud. And, oh, the little librarian has to tell them, oh, could you be a little bit more quiet, please, because... The other animals are trying to read, and they say, well, we're sorry, but we're trying to practice. The band's getting together for our concert, and we need to practice. And she says, well, why don't you come right up here? You can be in the meeting room and shut the door, and then you can be as loud as you want. Perfect. So everybody's going about their business. They're putting books back on the shelves. Families are reading. But then rain starts to fall in the library. Uh oh, is there a leak in the roof? No. There's a little wolf and she's crying because her book is very sad and it makes her so sad. Oh no, but don't worry. The little librarian knows what to do to help the wolf too. And so they go about until closing time when the sun's starting to come up and it's dawn. But you know, sometimes there's just one patron who won't leave. So they have to decide what to do. Wow, the one patron who's still reading, can they help him out too? They can. So you find out what they do in the Midnight Library to help Mr. Tortoise. 
Now, I don't think our library is especially quiet, and the library that Oscar and Theodore visit is also not so quiet, but I have to say, as far as I know, I don't know that we've ever had a monster like that in the library. But again, I'll be prepared since I've read this book. Books, books are very useful for helping you get prepared for things. It is Saturday, and so Oscar and Theodore's dad rounds it all, all the books that he got last Saturday, fills up the car so they could take those back to the library and get more. So Oscar and Theodore are getting ready, brushing their teeth. They stop for breakfast. And then they return all their books at the library. There, wave to the librarians. One's friendly, one's a little cranky, kind of like Mr. McBee. Maybe it takes a little while to warm up. But Oscar and Theodore go down to the children's room, children's department. Dad goes up to the nap department to have a little rest until they're ready. So they find some books and they start reading, but then they hear some noise. Boom, crash, growl. And Oscar says, shh, knock it off, Theodore. And Theodore says, it's not me. Nope, wasn't him. It appears there's a library or a monster in the library. Oscar says, there's a monster in the library. Theodore says, I told you it wasn't me. So, oh my goodness, what are they going to do? It, not only is it a monster, it's a monster with five heads. So they can't hide. They can't run. They can't bluff. Try to trick the monster. Ooh, the monster really didn't like it when they tried to staple its feet to the floor. So what can they possibly do? What will make this these this monster with five heads happy. <gasps> Find out, check it out. See what makes them happy, if anything. Now this story, The Lost Library, is about a little boy named Oliver. And Oliver just moved to a new house and he had to leave behind his old house and his friends there, but at least he got to bring his books. He does like to read. But then he finds in his closet a kind of strange book. It's sort of floating. So he thinks maybe the family that used to live there left it behind, but it says, oh, please return to the lost library. He doesn't know what that means. So his mom's too busy unpacking to tell him. His cat's too busy sleeping. But his new neighbor, Rosie, she thinks she could help out. She says, I know someone who might be able to help and takes him to the local library, because when in doubt, you can ask a librarian and we would always be happy to help you. So Rosie says, we could ask the librarian, but Oliver says, oh, I'll just return the book right here in the return slot. Except when he does, the floor gives way and Rosie and Oliver both fall down below into the very bottom of the library, where there are books that are acting like birds. And then they come to water. What could they do? Well, luckily they found a book about how to build a boat and row. So luckily they could row through the water in the bottom of the library. But then after that, oh my goodness, the shelves turn into a forest. Don't they look like trees? But luckily they found a book about what to do if you're lost in a forest. Oh dear. But finally, shelf, bookshelves turn into, Oliver thought they were just stairs, but they were not. That was the back of a bookshelf dragon. Oh no, what are they going to do now? It does look a little cranky. Can they find a book that can help them with this? We'll have to find out. Check this book out in the library. And also, if you get this book out on every page, somewhere in the picture, there's a, a dragon and it's not always as big and easy to see as this. I had a little trouble finding some of them. So if you check this book out, not only do you get to read the book, you get to look for dragons too. So it's got a little added bonus. So friends, I hope you will enjoy these library books about libraries. Come on in and check them out or reserve them. Pick them up that way, but I hope you will enjoy them. I hope you enjoy whatever you're reading this week, and I will see you again next week, and we'll talk about some more books. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.